Hi everyone and welcome to this video where we paint this geometric design of a pattern that is a historic pattern existing on a, a brass ewer uh, from Iraq from the 13th century and this ewer actually at the moment uh, sits at the British Museum in London. I'll leave a link uh, for you to see a clear picture of it in the comment section below. If you stick around till the end I've got uh, uh, more information about this type of stencil and where you can actually uh, get one to try uh, your own painting in your own style of colors and color palette. And uh, if you have any questions at any time, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll be more than happy to answer them and help you on your artistic journey. So let's get started and hope you enjoy watching. Thank you. Let's start painting. We've got the stencil here, it's already sealed and it's ready to go. I've chosen my three paint mixes. I'm going with a turquoise and a turquoise mixed with uh, titanium white. And I'm going with this orange paint as well. And uh, I think I've created this from cadmium yellow hue and um, cadmium red hue, I believe. So they're all cadmium free paint and um, safer to use, of course. The first step I always um, take is fix my painting with a little bit of blue tech just to make sure that it doesn't move around when I'm painting it. So let me try and just keep it in frame here and it's always good to just make sure that you know things are fixed in place now what i do is i have a brush that i've actually trimmed so i'm gonna show you here let me zoom in a little bit to show you more of the pattern and the brush and this is the brush you can see that i've uh, cut you know some of the hairs on this brush and what i'm going to do is i'm going to start with the deep turquoise and i'm just going to go inside this line and start over as we say this is just the first layer and we just want to make sure that all the shapes are blocked in uh, correctly and nicely and fully. I really like this pattern and it's uh, actually a very uh, interesting one. I got it from a book. Uh, I can't remember uh the name of the book um they didn't really analyze it uh, correctly or fully i did the, most of the analysis and figured it out so uh, i'll be also sharing this in future videos on how to draw such a pattern so you can see that it's it's quite interesting it's got a lot of shapes and um, it's uh, quite intricate and when you see the end result um, it's quite satisfying there are I think I've painted a couple of these before and um, Again, they are very popular at the art market that I go to. Uh, you can find some of the photos on my Instagram account. I'll leave also a link to that below. Okay. Always choose the brush 
uh, carefully because the brush size will have to, you know, match uh, the sizes uh, of the shapes that you're trying to paint in. So uh, if I would have had a um, larger brush, it would have been more and more difficult. Okay, you can see it's a little bit ununiform, but that's okay. Um, this is the first layer, and the first layer is always uh, a bit crude. This way. Okay. Almost done with the first shape. Okay, so the first shape is done, and I think I haven't missed any spots. Um, I'll let this dry and then go over it with the uh, second uh, paint or second layer for this shape. I think it should take maybe 20 minutes to be dry to the touch, and then I go over with the second layer. So now that's dry, ready for the second layer. And this time, try to be more and more careful with my paint strokes or my brush strokes, sorry. And you can see that it's, it's getting now to the actual, you know, color that we are after or hue that we are after and value as well. Um, if you don't have the stencils, of course, you could always um, create this design with a pencil on paper, or you can create a template and then uh, transfer this template with transfer paper. And I've shown these techniques in other videos on my channel, so feel free to go and check out these videos and if you have any questions again feel free to leave them in the comment section below if there is any step or any particular technique that you want to see more of or you want to see a dedicated video of please feel free to ask just leave a comment below and I'll uh, Make sure that I cover that, um, or I cover, or I answer your question in the next video. OK. 
Okay. That's very good. So this shape is now done. And I think I'm happy with the result. We can go in now with the other view, which is the one that is diluted with or um, lightened with uh, the um, titanium white. So what I'm going to do is, is just thinking about where to go, but so I'm just going to go into these ones on the outside. This will give a great contrast with the deep turquoise that I have in place. Okay, so that's one. Uh, I gotta decide whether I'll go with the ones inside this orange, yeah. So I prefer to actually go with the, uh, well, let's see. So this is going to be orange. This is going to be orange. Yeah. So I'll just continue for the ones on the outside as blue. And again. Okay. So it makes sense to just paint, you know, these together as blue. Perhaps maybe I'll just leave it there and switch to the orange to finish the ones inside just to show you uh, what result we're trying to go for. Because then it will make it more obvious on the, on the painting. And okay, let's see. We gotta be careful with this color as well. And it's gonna need more layering this color wood or this paint mix wood because it is actually very translucent so it's an interesting combination that i haven't tried before but um you know there is no harm in uh, trying and i think that you know, we only learn by trying and making mistakes, so let's hope it's not a massive mistake. Okay. So you can see that I've actually encroached on some of the turquoise paint, but that's okay. We're going to paint all over that again, so there is no big problem with that. So you get the idea and 
what we're just going to do is continue painting in this manner until we get all the uh, painting done. And then once it's once the orange and the lighter turquoise parts are painted with the first layers, let them dry, leave them for a couple of hours to dry, and then go over them again with uh, more layers until they are opaque enough and give the result that I'm after. I think it wouldn't take more than two layers for the light turquoise, maybe three or four layers for the orange parts. So after I've um, completed painting all these shapes and I've done multiple layers, I very carefully start peeling away my stencil. Everything, of course, I have to make sure that everything is dry and it is dry to the touch. You can put the back of your hand on the painting to just make sure that it is uh, dry. And um, I just peel away very, very carefully. So I, with one finger, I keep it on the paper or the surface and with the other hand I rest it on the rest of the painting or the surface and I just peel away very very slowly and very gently making sure that I don't damage the paper underneath and I don't rip away any of the shapes that I've painted because remember this is acrylic paint and it takes uh, weeks to fully dry so you can see that I've ripped part of the paper here. So what I'll do is I'll fix that later, of course. But um, I just need to make sure that uh, no more paper is actually, you know, um, pulled with the stencil. And I can fix that later with a bit of white uh, paint just to, you know, stick it in place and so So... Again, I have to make sure that I peel the stencil very slowly and very gently. And as you can see, I've finished peeling the parts on the outside. That's cool. So I'll just continue removing this part of the stencil. Uh, you can see that the shape is starting to become apparent uh, to the eye. So, again, very, very slowly peeling away the stencil. Trying to, or making sure that I don't damage any parts in the process. And using my weeding tool or vinyl weeding tool, which is something that looks like, you know, one of those dentist uh, tools. I just, you know, try to help getting the stencil out of place. But again, uh, the pulling is mainly done, you know, by hand and gently. So again, need to just make sure I pull this out very gently. So, quite happy with the results so far. It's looking very neat. Let's hope that uh, the end result is actually um, in good shape. Okay. I will attempt to zoom in a little bit more just to show you more of the peeling process and to actually um, make it super clear for you and uh, you 
Now, a lot of people tell me that this is the most satisfying part of the process, uh, which I don't disagree with, but um, I really enjoy the designing uh, parts of the process and the painting also uh, parts of the process. These are the ones that I enjoy the most. Don't get me wrong, peeling the stencil is satisfying, but um, it's not, I wouldn't say it's my favorite part of, of the whole process, to be honest. Uh, but that's fine, you know. Uh, so you can see that now, while I was chatting away, I made a mistake and pulled, you know, a little part of the paint or the painted shape here, which is okay. So I'm going to go over that in a bit after I finish peeling my stencil. But it's a reminder that I got to be very, very careful when peeling the stencil. Uh, you don't take this for granted. You need to be very, very measured with the force you're using to peel away your stencil. Otherwise you can easily ruin it. I can see also there's a bit of green underneath the uh, orange here. Again, this is one to fix. And I'll show you once we complete peeling the stencil, how we can fix all these uh, mistakes. I think I just need to make it a bit brighter, perhaps, yeah, a little bit brighter. Um, the reason being, when I zoomed in, it became a bit darker, which is okay. Okay, so, so far, this is the result. And, you know, this part is, again, not that glamorous. I suppose it is enjoyable to an extent. I don't disagree with those who enjoy it. I just think that uh, the painting process itself is the one that gets me in the flow and you know I tend to lose myself and lose the time painting those stencils and um, I get a huge sense of relaxation when I'm painting uh, these designs And it's quite an intricate and interesting pattern. I wonder how they managed to create this back in the day, let alone, uh, you know, inscribing it on brass uh, ear or flask, which is not an easy uh, feat by any stretch. Um, I'm just fascinated about how people back in the day used to, you know, the craftsmen and the mathematicians back in the day who, you know, derived these uh, pieces of art. I mean, these people weren't just artists. Uh, they were artists, engineers, mathematicians, you name it. And uh, above all, of course, they were very um, clever and um, skilled craftspeople. So, we've got one mistake here to be fixed. We've got two, three, four, of course, my bad, and five. So this is so far what I can see. Um, there's very little dots here. Maybe we can pick those up as well. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little bit very, so I gotta get a clean brush, um, just a very, you know, just a little bit of white. Here 
here we go. You see that? You cannot see it anymore because the white has just dissolved into the background. I used a very, very um, clean and dry brush in order to basically use that white as a, you know, as a glue that sticks, you know, that, um, that piece in place. Okay. And that's it. And it's, it, it could show in the, in the final painting, you know, with the sheen, but I don't mind that. I mean, it's white at the end of the day. So I try to feather that out a little bit here and there. And that's it. You know, if, uh, if I come back and find that when it dries, if it, if it shows like a different color, well, in that case, I'm going to be diluting it with a little bit of water. And in order to do that, I can just get like a, an old lid and, you know, put some, just a drop of water really here. And, you know, that's all I need and try to feather this out, you know, because make it more transparent and and I think it won't now it's it's not gonna show in the final result. So once this dries is gonna be good to go. Okay. So enough with this white stuff. Now, on to the light turquoise to fix that mistake. And in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a very thin trimmed brush. I'm going to show you that in a bit. So this is my brush. I get my paint here and I try very 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 carefully I have to make sure that I do it very very carefully and very swiftly I would say is the right word you don't need to dwell on it you probably now cannot see the the mistake or the error anymore as you can see we've just gone very slowly and then we pull that oh, let me show you we go very slowly and then pull that across okay and over here as well so here you go that's our process to fix that before we move on to the next color, we need to check, do we have any other light turquoise points that needs fixing? And I don't think so. They're all good to go. So we close our light turquoise color. We go for, and we go for our orange color. Well, we can first fix our dark turquoise. I think there is a there is a little bit of spot to be fixed here. So again, go and get my dark turquoise and go over this part. And that's it. Fixed. Now I'm left with these orange parts that need an extra, maybe an extra layer, but I'm not really sure about which brush. So you know what? I won't risk it. I'll just use the same tiny uh, miniature brush that I've trimmed, uh, especially for these occasions. So here you go. This spot needs to be fixed. So I go in with the orange. And what I do is again, I pull very, very swiftly over the green and leave it to dry. 
don't overdo it. We've got a couple of spots here as well. So again, I'm going to go with the orange. Pull it over. And let it dry. Once it's dried, I can go back and go over it again if I choose to do so. Okay. So here I am with me zoom out again and with the shape all fixed and looking good. And this has been an eight inch by eight inch painting. If you have any questions about this process, and if you have any question about this design, this artwork, um, please feel free to put them in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to help you out with, um, with learning how to create and paint designs like this. If you like the stencil, I will also leave a, a, a link below in the description uh, where I am selling some of these stencils. Now, just as a disclaimer, I'm shooting this in July 2023. I've got maybe four or five stencils available. I haven't got uh, so many for sale and I don't usually sell my stencils. So um, uh, this time, because a number of people contacted me and asked me for it, I'm just putting uh, a few of them out there to share the joy really and uh, get people to uh, try this uh, style of hard edge painting. So what I do is, you know, I prep all the stencil for you and all you have to do is just mix your own paint, acrylic paint and paint. So it's sealed, it's prepped, it's everything and it's ready to go. And uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing your different designs. Uh, as always, thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, please feel free to raise them. Uh, thank you and have a nice day.